Welcome back to the class on uh, power semiconductor drives. In this class, we are going to discuss about the braking methods of a DC motor. So, what is meant by braking means intentionally to bring the speed of a motor to the zero. Suppose if the motor is running with the some amount of the supply, with a given load. If we disconnect the supply, a motor speed also comes to the zero. That is nothing but a natural break. But in this case, it will take a, so much of time to come to the zero speed. There are different methods are available for the DC motor to bring the speed of a motor to the zero. It is a process in which the speed of a motor is decreased to the zero. There are different methods are available. That is the dynamic braking and plugging and regenerate to brake. In case of a dynamic braking, we are operating the motor as a generator. So what is the power is generated by the machine that will be dissipated across the resistance so that the kinetic energy of the motor will be decreases. So the speed of the motor is come to the zero. That's plugging. Initially, the motor will be running in one direction. Now we are going to interchange the interchange the voltage applied to the motor so that the motor will be running in a reverse direction. The torque produced in a motor will be reverse direction. Once it is reversed, now the motor will be trying to rotate in the opposite direction. Already the motor is running in one direction. So the opposite torque will be developed in the motor so that the speed of the motor is come to the zero. At that point, we are disconnecting the supply. So the speed of the motor is come to the zero. In case of regenerative braking, the same motor will be operating as a generator so that if you utilize the power given by the generator, then the speed of the motor will be decreases in case of a regenerative brake. But the regenerative braking we can apply practically only for the shunt motor and a separately excited motor and compound motors, but we cannot apply for the series motors. For the shunt motor, what are the different types of braking methods are we can apply practically? The first one is the dy dynamic braking of a DC motor. So this is the circuit diagram. This is the armature. This is the field winding. This is the switch. This is the DC supply. So whenever we are giving the DC supply to the field winding and armature, the motor will be rotating in one direction. With a some amount of speed, it will be rotating. Now suppose if you want to decrease the speed of a motor, now what we are doing is that uh, we are giving a supply to the field winding. Now we are changing the armature to the position two. So whenever we are changing the armature terminal of the position two, then what happened means there is some amount of voltage will be generated in a motor that is armature of a motor that is EB. Now this voltage will be trying to give a power to the external resistance. Suppose if we compare the first case and second case, in the first case, the armature current is going into the armature. In the second case, the armature current is going out of the armature. Nothing but a, there is no change in the direction of the flux, but the direction of the armature current will be changes. Whenever the direction of the armature current is changes, the torque produced in a armature also will be changes. So the tor torque is negative. When the Already the motor is running in one direction. When the torque is producing in the opposite direction, so the speed of a motor will be decreases. Whenever the speed of the motor is come to the zero, then we are disconnecting the. This is the method, nothing but a dynamic brake. In this case, the motor is operating as a generator. We are not going to disturb the power which is given to the field winding. Only thing is, we are changing the armature to the armature which is connected to the external resistance. In the first case, this machine will be acting as a motor. In the second case, the same machine will be operating as a generator because to, we want to decrease the speed of a motor. So whatever the power is generated that we are feeding to the external resistance. So the torque produced in the armature winding, uh, armature winding is negative. So already the motor is rotating in one direction. The torque is opposing the actual speed of a motor, the speed is come to the these are the characteristics of a dynamic braking of a DC shunt motor. So this is the characteristics. Nothing but this is the curve in which the machine will be operating as a motor. Suppose if the motor is operating at this point, 
Now at this point, if you apply the braking, nothing but we were changing the armature terminal to the armature terminal, which is connected to the external resistance. Now it follows. Uh, operating point now come here. Now the speed of the motor will be slowly decreases and come to the. So in this region, the torque is negative. In this region, the torque is positive. When the torque is positive means the machine will be operating in the motor. The torque is negative means whatever the torque is developed in the armature, if it is negative means it becomes a braking. Now we are going to see the plugging of a DC motor. In case of plugging, what we are doing is the first case, the switch is placed in one and one dash so that the DC supply is given to the field winding as well as the armature winding also. So nothing but a, the torque equal to torque is almost all proportional to the pi into IA. So the direction of the flux and the armature current is same. So the motor will be rotating in a in this direction. In one direction, it will be rotating. Now we want to decrease the speed of a motor at this point. Now what we are going to do is that we are not going to change the terminals of the field winding, just we are going to change the terminals of a armature winding to the two and the two dash that we can see here. So whenever you are moving these two terminals to the armature by two and two dash, there is no change in the direction of the field current, but the, now the armature we are connecting here to the supply where the opposite voltage is available. So whenever you apply the opposite voltage, now the current will be passing in this manner. If you apply the KVL in this loop, this voltage rise, is the back EMF in armature winding also the voltage rise, these two voltage will be added up. So the net voltage within the motor will be higher to limit the current we are keeping the high amount of resistance in series with the series with the armature. But whenever we apply the voltage in this direction, you now the current is passing in the opposite direction when compared to the motor. But there is no change in the direction of the flux in case of motor as well as the braking also. So the torque de developed in the motor will be opposite. Then the already the armature will be rotating one direction. The torque is opposite direction. So the speed of the motor will be decreased. Then you have to remove the supply. Then you have to remove the supply. Otherwise, the motor will be rotating in an opposite direction. Now we are going to see the plugging characteristics of a DC motor. This is the motor operation. This is the speed torque characteristics of a motor. As the torque is increased, the speed of the motor will be decreased. We are assuming that there is some amount of load is applied on the motor so that we are getting the operating point here. At this point, we are applying the plugging. Nothing but we are applying the reverse voltage to the armature winding of a DC motor. So whenever you apply the reverse voltage to the armature winding, now the operating point will be shifted here. The negative torque is produced in the motor. When the negative torque is produced, the speed of the motor will be slowly decreased. Whenever the speed of the motor will be decreased to the zero, see, at this point, the speed of the motor is decreased, but there is some amount of torque will be developed in a motor. So at this point, you have to disconnect the armature terminals from the, the supply. Otherwise, the motor will be rotating in a reverse direction. Next, regenerative braking of a shunt motor. Actually, this regenerative braking will be occurs only when motor is driving a active loads. Active loads means lo load can able to give the kinetic energy to the armature. Here we have taken the some example. One is the the motor which is driving the locomotive, nothing but a train. In a normal track, when the train is going a normal track, because these wheels will be rotated by the DC shunt motor, we assume that this will be this locomotive will be run by the DC shunt motor. So the supply is given to the field winding as well as armature winding. The machine will be operating in a motor. So the locomotive will be moving in a nothing but a plain area. When the locomotive is moving in a gradient area, nothing but a something slow. When the locomotive is going in a downstream area, this wheel has a some amount of see here the potential energy will be existing between the vehicle as well as the ground. So because of the potential energy, the automatically thus the, this locomotive will be trying to move from the upper stream to the lower stream. Nothing but a, the wheel has a some amount of kinetic energy. These wheels are connected to the 
armature of a motor. So this wheel is giving a mechanical input to the armature. So the armature will be automatically rotated. See, in that case, if you make this voltage, nothing but the voltage in armature winding, nothing but back EMF is more than the supply voltage, the same machine will be operating as a generator. If you utilizing that power at a supply, then the speed of the motor will be decreased. This is the regenerative brake. Okay, this is the first case where the motor is operating EV less than the V. This is the second case where the back EMF is greater than the V. Nothing but applied voltage. Sometimes, even though we are giving the mechanical input to the motor, the magnitude of back EMF is not more than the supply voltage. We should not change the field current because if the field current is rated value, we, for, we should not increase further. So by that time, what we, have, what we, we are doing is by means of power electronic converter, we are making this voltage less than the EV. Whenever we are making this voltage less than the EV, then the back EMF is more than the applied voltage. So this motor will be giving a power back to the supply. So the speed of the motor will be. These are the characteristics of a DC shunt motor during the regenerative braking. This is the positive torque. This is the negative torque. This is the regenerative braking characteristics. These are the dynamic braking of a series motor. So this is the circuit diagram for the dynamic braking of a series motor. Initially, we are assuming that the series motor is supplied with the supply. Now the current is passing in uh, from supply S1, S2 and armature A1. So the motor will be rotating in a one direction. The same machine has to operate the generator. Whatever the power is given by the motor, that should be dissipated across the external resistance. But in case of a dynamic braking, see the try to observe the connections here. We should not change the direction of the current passing through the field winding. Now we are disconnecting the supply. Whenever we are disconnecting the supply, so the same machine will be operating as a generator. Now we have to interchange the terminal supply series motor. Now, if we compare the first case and second case, the current passing through the field winding is same. That is always from the S1 to S2. But the direction of the current in armature winding in motor and braking will be different. So the negative torque will be generated in a motor. So the speed of the motor will be decreased. This is nothing but a dynamic braking of a series motor. How much external resistance we are connecting here? That is only controlling how much time taken by the motor to come to the zero speed. So these are the speed torque characteristics of a DC series motor. This is the speed torque characteristics of a DC series motor during the braking. Now we are going to see the plugging of a DC motor. In case of plugging of DC series motor, what exactly you have done in a shunt motor, you have to do the same thing in case of a DC motor, but apply the reverse voltage to the motor. So the torque developed in the motor will be opposite. When the speed of the motor is come to zero, then I will disconnect the supply. This is the circuit diagram for the plugging of DC series motor. Whenever we apply the voltage here, the current is passing from the supply, field winding and armature. The current will be producing in this manner. The torque is developed in the motor. So the motor will be rotating in a one direction. Now to apply the plugging, apply the reverse voltage to the armature winding. See, try to observe the first di circuit diagram, second diagram, circuit diagram. This is the plus and minus mean. This is due to the back EMF in a R, due to the applied voltage in an armature. A1 is plus, B, A2 is negative. The same polarity is maintained here also. A2 is negative, A1 is positive. Now we apply the reverse voltage to the armature winding. So whenever we apply the reverse voltage to the armature winding, if you apply the KVL in this loop, this is voltage rise, this is also the voltage rise, both gets added. The resultant voltage in the circuit will be higher. So to limit the current within the circuit, they are keeping the external resistance. So one more important point, what you have to observe here is that the direction of the current passing through the field winding during the motoring operation and braking operation is same, but the only thing is the direction of current passing through the armature winding during the motoring and braking will be opposite. So 
when ever we are apply the volt reverse voltage the negative torque is developed in the motor if the negative torque is developed the speed of the motor is decreases once the speed of the motor is come to the zero then our disconnect is happening the same thing we are going to observe in the characteristics of a plugging this is the motoring operation characteristics see here speed torque characteristics of series motor we are assuming that the motor is operating at this operating point at this point you are applying the plugging now the characteristics will be shifted to the this side because when you apply the plugging the negative torque is down so because of negative torque the speed of the motor will be decreases when the speed of the motor is come to the zero at this point the some amount of torque will be adjusting nothing but need to talk so the motor will be rotating in reverse direction to avoid that i have to remove the supply now before going to close this uh, lecture we are going to summarize this today class the first we have seen the what is the what is meant by different uh, braking methods the three methods we have studied one is the dynamic braking plugging and regenerative braking all these three methods we can apply for the dc shunt motor but in case of dc series motor we can apply only the plugging and dynamic braking we can't apply the regenerative braking for the dc series motor if you have any doubt in this lecture you can ask, you can ask me directly or in a comment box so that i can answer your questions